Again, the Derby of North Street shall have its glorious moment. St. George's College, Kingston College, Issa Manicop Action starts right now. Let our colors wave and either victory or else a grave. Words from William Shakespeare that perfectly set the scene of a fierce battle. The Battle of North Street between Kingston College and St. George's College live from Stadium East in St. Andrew, Jamaica. Well, the weather is a preview to what we should expect in this game. It's hot. Temperature stands at 29 degrees Celsius and the humidity is at 70 percent. Well, Kingston College, they are at the top of the table, Group A, and they'll be hoping that they can finally get their hands on St. George's College and come away with a win. But they have to fight against this team who also want to win for their talent and get three points and move ahead on the table and, of course, draw closer and get bragging rights as a team on North Street. Thank you so much for joining us. Good afternoon to each and every one of you who are on Sportsmats, uh, Scene TV, CBM, and of course on the Sportsmats app and on YouTube. Thank you for joining us. My name is Gerard Morrisili, and uh, this is Derby Day. And joining me on Derby Day is Jenny Robinson. We're very excited for this matchup. It is the Battle of North Street with Kingston College and St. George's College. The last time there was a big matchup against them, Gerard, was in 2018 in the Manning Cup final. The score was 3 2, awarded to Kingston. College and I'm wondering if they would want to you know change that fixture today well you must uh, also uh, re well remember the significance of that this is not only about getting three points and going above well uh, joining them at the top of the table but it is also about getting retribution for that same final because remember it would have been it would have gone down to the last minute of the game so of course they want to do to, to make up for what happened and come away with three points here today. Yes, well, defending champions Kingston College. Well, we have a team feature. Let's take a look. The reality is we're Kingston College and whoever plays, we are here to compete. We will fight. We won't go out without fighting. To win means to be successful or victorious in a contest. To win also means to be vigilant, lest you fall prey to bad habits. I think that's the biggest challenge because I think we have a good crop of youngsters and they can play football. The thing is to take them away from the distraction and the, you know, Kingston College, we always find ways and means of distracting ourselves, whether it's us within ourselves or the spectators or the wider community. So it's just to keep them focused. Only we can beat us ourselves once we put our mind to it. Willpower alone doesn't guarantee success, but it is a good tool to have, especially when going head-to-head -head with arch-rivals St. George's College. We respect the work that St. George's College has done over the years, um, the, the, the championship glory that they have brought to their own institution, and we know that every year um, there's a, a rivalry, uh, as they call it, the, the, the Battle of the North Street are up North Street and so we expect nothing different this time around um, but in this moment we cannot worry about St. George's College and what they are going to bring we have to spend the time focusing on making ourselves better every day that we come out on this pitch Knowing what's at stake we expect a real exhibition and wonder if at the end Casey will say Fortis, Cadere, Cedere, Non Potest The brave may fall but never yield I'm looking forward to the challenge you know, we're preparing. I hope they are prepared. So let's see what happens. Every game is important. Every game is three points. Um, every game will treat as a war. We're going out there, going out there to defend um, our school, we're going out there to defend the two trophies, and we're going to get the job done.
so that was Kingston College there in our Digicel team feature. Time now to talk to some fans. I have a one on my right from Kingston College and one on my left, well two on my left from St. George's, but one will be speaking on behalf. Uh, let's start with, with Sherry. Sherry, you are the mother of the head boy, team captain of the St. George's College uh, team. You must be proud of him. Yes, I'm extremely proud of my son and I'm also proud of the team. They have come a far away and I know the best team will win. Yeah. So the Battle of North Street, always a fierce battle. What makes this one so special? Because um, it's coming from the North Street side, Battle of the Derbies. But I know Georges have the momentum, the capabilities, and they have the drives. I know they will come out on top, definitely. So let's head over now to Kingston College. Introduce yourself to the viewers, let them know who you are. Well, um, my name is Andrea. Um, my brother is an old boy from KC, both my brothers. And I had a younger one that went to George's, but it's always the purple and white. Oh, that's great. So how how what 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 is the the, the special of fear uh between uh, george well between casey and you and not george's well to be honest casey was always from as a child and it was just casey all the way you know my brother played football and um he was on the track team so we're talking about years ago with um smalls and you know so it's always been a favorite for me casey all right so the game is coming up uh do you have a score line in mind well i'm predicting 2-1 purple and white so we'll see may the best team win i mean let's go what about you sherry any scoreline in mind no but i know judges will come out on top yes. definitely. definitely on top no 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 doubt about that definitely no doubt <laughs> all right like the purple and white will show <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so the, you can see just from this interview how hot it is and of course the battle on the field is going to be as hot. Let's take a look now at George's in this team feature. St. George's College is the second most successful team in the history of the Issa Manning Cup competition. However, the 22-time champions have not won the title since 2012. And last season, the Light Blues had their worst campaign in recent memory, failing to get out of the first round. I wish we couldn't talk about last year's season, but it's, it's just a reality. Um, I think we learned um, a lot from it. Things out of our control last year because based on the, the, the rule, the government and the school, we weren't wanted, we weren't going to expose the kids them to to, to, to um, the virus, so we, we'd have um, do things, much things different last year. But as I say, with a truncated season, we, you know, we could have done what we what was in front of us, what was the card was still in front of us, that we could have done it. But this year, um, we hit the, um, the training ground earlier this year, and you know, I think so, so, so far so good. We look at the season, but yeah, we learned from last year, came back and put in the work, and hopefully we see the difference this year. Redemption is the name of the STGC game this season. I'd say the first thing is dedication. We need to be dedicated. We need to know that, yes, last season was poor. There's, some, there's going to be some people coming at us, not believing in us. There's going to be some people maybe thinking, oh, we're going to do well based on our preseason. So it's really to just block out the haters, the negative comments, to just go in with what we know we train every day, the camp that we had over the summer. We just go in with what we feel is best, how we play, our style of play, and just go into each match confident, and that should take us. I think it takes guts and strategy, a lot actually, and you know, togetherness, the team has it. So I think we'll go pretty far this season. They are in what is widely considered the group of death, a group that includes a familiar foe unlike any other, a rival in which they share a street history and so much more. You know, it's going to be a heated match. Uh, Europa Cup played in the summer. As you could see, that was a 10 all 5 5 game. So, you know, there's going to be spectators coming with high expectations for both teams. I think both teams are coming prepared for that match. Both teams have players that are coming prepared and want to prove something at that match. So, I think. It really will come down to the day itself, you know, the ball is drawn as they say. So you don't want to make too much predictions and you don't know what will happen on the day. You know, we can come out good, we can come out bad, vice versa for Casey. So it's really a match to look forward for, a match that both spectators for each team can look forward for and wait on. It's a derby, it goes almost no, no 60 years. So we, we are always looking forward to it. I mean, it's always a humdinger. I can't tell you the prediction, but we know that we will go there and we will represent ourselves. Victory will be high on today's agenda for STGC.
Yeah, so that was St. George's College there. You heard from them. And of course, you know that they are their main objective is to get past what happened or overcome what happened last season. Of course, it was a pretty poor season by their standards and their reputation. They finished in sixth in Group A last season, but this time they're second on, um, on, the, on the table and looking for a resurgence of some sort. Got grit and perseverance from St. George's in this schoolboy season. They're in redemption mode. And if you don't want to miss out on any of this schoolboy football action, stay tuned. We'll be back after the break. Stadium East for this Battle of North Street, St. George's Kingston College coming up against St. George's College. Uh, Janae Robinson still with me. Janae, the fans are steadily coming into the stadium. Do you expect a big crowd for this one? Surely I do. I think that well, all the fans from North Street have been waiting for this matchup. They haven't played each other this season and this will be the first time they have their encounter with each other. So I think everybody will be out in their colors purple and blue. It's also <laughs> uh, Heroes Weekend so Monday is off so more people at, uh, at Liberty to come out and, and support their teams. Uh, but for these boys they go to two institutions that are full of rich history. Uh, of course, they play with pride. And of course, uh, Kingston College 
uh, they are at the top right now had a pretty good start to the season defending champions uh, we saw them against Calabar coming away with a 2-1 victory and then from there it was just no no losses well we have the team the, the fixtures for um, Kingston College Kingston College playing Calabar five goals yeah, 5-1. Five, 5-1. One. Five, one. That game, yes. the opener. Yeah, not 2-1. 5-1. One. One. Playing, well, well, they've won majority of their games. Yeah, so all of them. As know, all, exactly. Yeah. So, well, this game will be determining whether or not they will win or continue that winning streak. St. George's College, on the other hand. Well, they started pretty strongly as well. 6-0 uh, in the first game against Arden. And then coming against them again and beating them 3-0. Arden, a better showcase, defensive showcase at that time. And um, they have one loss, though, against Waterford. Which was that pretty was a surprising, yeah, yes. That was a shocker. A lot of people uh, gave a friend of mine some heat because of it. He's a George's old boy and, and he felt a little bit. Our, our cameraman as well, one of them, Nita, <laughs> he felt it as well. But um, there wasn't much to say about that. But George's, they Redeem have themselves. done way better than what they did last season. Uh, so today, we have a couple of fixtures in Group A. Kingston College, they take, they take on St. George's College. That will be here. And uh, Waterford, they take on Arden and Calabar versus Meadowbrook. Those are the other two games that, all, that start at 3.30 p.m. And uh, of course, those will be at various grounds. And Group well, A, well, three o'clock PM. Yeah, you don't want to be late. You don't want to be late. Yeah. So these teams would have met a couple of times since 2014. Uh, St George's College versus Kingston College. St George's have three wins. Uh, Kingston College have two, and there's one draw between two uh, between the two of them in 2014. That was a round one match, three nil uh, in favor of George's. Yes, and the last time in 2018 when they had that matchup against each other in the Manning Cup Finals, even though the results was 3-2, Kingston College really fought to the finish to get that victory over St. George's College. And I'm sure we'll see more fighting here today. As you can see, only three points separate them at the top. Of course, they will go uh, tied, but if St. George's College can score at least five goals against, <laughs> against, uh, St. Jo against Kingston College, they probably go ahead of them. But uh, if you look at the table, Waterford, they're third in the battle for that for one of the best thirds uh calabar fourth arden fifth and the metal six well here we have kingston college school facts 97 years of existence founded in 1925 the colors worn are purple and white a population of 1900 students 16 manning cup titles and the, the motto the brave may fall but never yield so janae you would have spoken to their coach raymond watson who is a very spiritual man let's hear what he had to say. Coach Raymond, your team has been on a winning streak throughout the duration of the first round so far. How has this winning streak affected your boys? Uh, definitely not. Uh, we are happy to be winning. We are always happy. We are used to winning. So uh, definitely not. What we want to do is to continue winning. <laughs> well, there has always been a rich rivalry amongst your opponents today. What are your hopes for today's match? Not my hopes. My ambition is to win the game. Three points. Okay. And lastly, what do you think of this SCG team you face today? Not giving too much away. What do you plan on doing to get the best of them? Early goal. Another early goal. Another early goal. Get the best of them from first half. And you have a lot of prospects such as Dijon Richards um, well, being the star for your show. Are there any other players on your bench that we haven't seen as yet? Not on the bench. We have an all-round team. We have played many minutes without Dijon Richards. In every team, there is a go-to player and he's the go-to player in our team. But we have other players as well. We have a good goalkeeper, good defence line. Our captain has been doing wonderful. Tashan Matisse has been a good servant. Another servant, Ashani Kennedy, who his name isn't mentioned much. Samuel Shakes does a lot of good work in midfield also. Well, let's look now at our digital player to watch. You would have heard the coach just talk about him. The go-to man, his name is the John Richards. They call him Whisper. Has 13 goals so far this season. The main goal scorer, the commander-in-chief on the field. He'll be expected to play that role here again today and hopefully give them a win against St. George's College and three points in the North Street battle. St. George's College, they were founded in 1850, celebrating 172 years, founded by 21 uh, Spanish people, uh, Spanish Jesus who were in exile because of, of religious reasons. That's why they're Catholic school. Population is 
14 at 96 they have they wear the colors light blue and white and they have 22 money cups the second most of all the urban schools and uh, their motto simply says knowledge is power knowledge is power is their motto and their coach neville bird as well had a chat with you earlier so let's hear what he had to say rather marcel gill <laughs> <laughs> Coach is Derby Day uh, coming up against your arch rivals Kingston College. You've waited uh, quite a long time for this one. Finally getting them. How pumped up are the boys for this one? I mean, to God be the glory. I mean, the condition is looking good. The feel is immaculate condition. I mean, just today for us, just performances. The guys go there today and, and play their best. About three points separating you and Kingston College in the table. Uh, how important is it to get a win here today? Um, the win is important, but for me, it's performance. I mean, we are work out. Uh, few things in training and if we go there to the execute, are we okay? So what kind of football can we expect from St. George's College? You just enjoy this college, I mean, um, play good, attractive and, and decent football, but, but also to, you know, to entertain and to, you know, to make a, a good game today. Uh, well, Casey, they're undefeated uh, so far in the tournament. You have one loss, but do you think you have what it takes to give them their first uh, defeat? Um, as I say, you know, we, are, we are more focused on, on us, St. George's College. If we get our or have to get and we get what we want to do today and you know that's a victory for us yeah what would you like to see the boys though uh, improve on in this game uh, i mean yeah, we'd ask him to go there today and execute from from minute one i mean don't make the game at the moment or surrounding the game i'm get to the best girl and relax and, and pass on the ball and you know hopefully we, we can do enough to get our three points today Thank you. Coach Marcel Gale looking for execution. Now let's look at the player to watch. Brian Burkett, player for St. George's College. Age 17, he has played three seasons of football as a midfielder, seven appearances and 10 goals. Let's see if he has any more goals up his sleeve. Yeah, we'll wait and see as we inch closer to kick off. Dean Smith, he's upstairs with Chris Taylor and we'll take a break and when we come back, They'll take you through the paces of this match. Don't go anywhere. Separated by a street of desire, the desire to conquer, to be the best of them all, rivalry of unmatched tenacity, slayers of dragons and some never to yield in battle.
a fight only to be won at the dying end. In time and time again, the Derby of North Street shall have its glorious moment. St. George's College, Kingston College, Issa Manicop Action starts right now. Welcome to the National Stadium Eastfield, the venue for what is expected to be an epic encounter in schoolboy football. The 2022 season has Kingston College and St. George's College in Group A, and this encounter has a so much potential. It doesn't quite happen often enough. A matchup of this magnitude, when it does occur, brings views beyond valuation and quantification, emotions heightened to contagion. It's scarcity, perhaps why thousands have eagerly anticipated this particular battle of wills and skills, and the exuberant onlookers, bring it brings them tremendous thrill. It is by its very definition a derby, team sharing not only a locale, a community, a road, but also a shared history of schoolboy football domination, and beyond that, a desire to always have the last laugh. It's an off street derby, Kingston College versus St. George's College on your home of champions. As they walk out, this is a rivalry of vintage and vigor. The memories of past contests are now well fermented in the minds of boys who have become men. Now, they vicariously relive the, that desire for triumph through the generation present. For this generation present, they have become more than players. They are artists painting their own future. Whatever happens on the pitch, the talks still will be high tempo. Only 313 steps separate the outer gates of these institutions. And as we look on the Kingston College men getting ready for the national anthem, they are ready to do battle against their rivals on North Street, St. George's College. Dean Smith with me, Chris Taylor. So they continue to sing the national anthem, the team from St. George's. So many spectators have come out in their numbers, all standing at attention as this bastion of national pride is played. A prayer, a hope, the anthem of a people, the national anthem of Jamaica. Up top. Up top, up top. So up the top. teams are greeting each other, St. George's, they greet the players from Kingston College and they've also greeted the referees as well. The captain there of Kingston College, Blaine Byam, also does a track and field, high jumper there for Kingston College, but this is where he does his work in the first part of the school year, the first term, the Christmas term, football is a fascination. The referee, Stefan Dua, assisted by Rolanza Bennett and Kevin Murray, the fourth official, Kiba Williams, and they have their own chatter as they get ready for what is expected to be a big encounter, Chris Taylor. This one is great football in action, great stories. The teams, they're preparing for their pitcher. That man to the second from right, Nashorda Gibbs, has a great potential. Let's have a quick look up at the lineup for Kingston College. In goal, Tajari Lead, Robert, Robert Swaby, Blaine Byam, Kimoy Wall, Kimani Reese, Deshaun Mattis, Ashani Kennedy, Dejon Richards, Deshaun Gibbs, Samuel Shakes, and Jaheem McLean. And they'll be playing for with a 4 3 3 formation. Of course, look out for Dejon Richards, aka Whisper, 13 goals and 9 assists. He wears a number 10. 
Stefan Dwar, the man so with the whistle, speaking yeah, with uh, yeah. right. Blaine Byam and uh, Joel Brown, the captains right. respectively. Blaine Byam, of course, from Kingston College, Joel Brown from St. George's College. The number 12 there, Brown. And that ball is what will be the focus, and the players will have to get it behind the line into the back of the net. That's Joshua Jackson, has so much potential for St. George's College. Let's have a quick look at their lineup in goal. Dijon Davis, they have a back three. Jamani McNaval, Jaheim Henry, Rashid, Rashid Hans. Five in the middle, Joshua Jackson, Brian Burkett, Adrian Reed, Joel Brown, Xavier Taylor, Keena Murray, and Michael Pennant. Of course, Jackson and Burkett, the two up top. Up top. 3-5-2, Brian Burkett, 10 goals and 6 assists. And it's the stories of the number 10s in these two teams. Brian Burkett playing in his third season for St. George's. And yeah, big matchup. Two high scoring teams. 37 goals for Kingston College so far this season. 33 for George's. So the match is started. And let's see how the teams shape up and line up in this one as the long ball is played over the top. St. George's College trying to make the early ascendancy. The Kingston College has enough time to mop up the damage. St. George's College always a very uh, adroit passing team, Chris Taylor, and they love to keep the possession of the ball, knock it around, open space. Yeah, both, both these teams, good ball playing teams. Kingston College probably use a counter attack a little bit more, especially with their wingers playing that 4 3 3 formation. But yes, St. George's love position. So the ball comes up, Kingston College clears quickly, and Ashada Gibbs gets it for them, plays through Dijon Whisper, Richards, he has it, sends it across, now it's picked up by, looks to be Kennedy, that's Kennedy with a strike, blocked, comes now to war. And St. George's College trying their utmost best to clear their lines. They do so only just. It comes to Robert Sow, the centre-back for Kingston College. Very important for the wing-backs to recover for St. George's. Of course, Reese and War playing in those positions. So yes, 3-5-2, nice. But when they're defending, they need to get back into a 5-3-2 formation or 5-3-1-1. Here's Kingston College again. Ball comes over the into the area. Gibbs! Oh, he had one touch too many. And it went to the goalkeeper, John Davis. Taking it comfortably in the end. The attacking intent of Kingston College on open display, Chris. Seven goals for Gibbs so far this season. There's the opportunity. Just saw the defender coming into his his mirror and decided to hit to, to just stop the shot at the moment. Yeah, seven goals. That's the head coach of Kingston College, Raymond Watson. Great player manager. Many individuals, even from other schools, have mentioned that he knows how to get individuals to play for him. And that is so very important, especially at the schoolboy level. At first we said player manager. I was wondering if you meant he was on the pitch, showing his skills as well. But yeah. It's with Richards. Was the assistant Christ. for quite some time with Ludlow Bernard. Raymond Watson. Now the head coach with Andrew Edwards as the technical director. So the ball played out for a corner kick, the first of the game for St. George's College. The Jarrah Lee. This is the technical director for St. George's College, Neville Bell. 15 schoolboy titles to his name, Neville Bell. 16 if you count the Camperdown victory he had in 1988 in the Walker Cup where he took over the reins from Jackie Walters. Former national under 20 head coach as well. 
Here's Kennedy trying to play through Gibbs. It comes to him. Can he make it count? Oh, he's cleared by Dijon Davis. He came out. Excellent goalkeeping there by Davis. Got, in, got injured as well, but just too much space for Kingston College in the first few moments. That was a strong challenge. It had to be. Very decisive from him. Been criticised early in the season for not coming out with conviction. Well, he certainly rectified that with that challenge. But again, the wing backs a little bit too open from a St. George's perspective. And that would be something that they need to rectify quickly or it's, they're going to pay for that. The pace of Kingston College certainly not to be taken lightly. Dijon Richards has pace. Kennedy, as we saw, Gibbs running very fast, getting that one. And these are players who are scoring as well. Gibbs with seven, including a hat-trick in the last game. Two the game before that. So he's been hot, the number 15. Richards, 13 goals. Well, he's been scoring all over. Already one hat-trick and four braces. And a couple of assists as well for Dijon Richards. Well, a couple has been nice. Nine assists. <laughs> Both himself and Mattis, the number eight in that attacking midfield role have been the main creators for Kingston College but yet War, War and Reese certainly need to track back a lot quicker than they are to solidify the defence there's Mattis there who was out for a couple of games our game as well Mattis oh, it's certainly a, an influential player in this KC team a man who was a part of the squad last year as well in their winning team Mattis didn't get a lot of game time but certainly would have built his confidence from the winning season in 2021 nine assists to him already close to the corner flag like St. George's College getting a throw in After a defensive blunder there from Blaine behind the captain Jackson plays it back out Kimani Reese there does the mop up for Kingston College. Can see another throw. No fault, no fault, no fault, no fault. They get the opportunity to clear now. Their outlet has been Gibbs, plays it very slickly to Mattis. Mattis now taking possession by Reed. Spreads it to Burkett. Good defensive clearance that. Kennedy now with it. Mattis stabs it for Kennedy. Throw in for Kingston College. Bayham. Crossfield pass. Finds Kimani Reese. St. George's College there it's been a spot of butter and yeah. they had to clear quickly yeah but on this occasion Campbell was back as well as their left back in hands so a lot more bodies back to deal with the pressure hands easily to goalkeeper Davis for St. George's College Jackson certainly has a lot of pace has been able to get through but solid defensively has been Kingston College here's Kennedy moves by the man oh the final pass they let him down was looking to open up to Sean Mattis now it's with Shakes sends it across to Reese finds Richards he has done so much from that angle. Richard sends it into the box. Doesn't find the desired target. And St. George's College only now just getting to clear. Getting that call for them. It's a free kick for them just outside their own 18-yard box. When the players slow down, that will work in St. George's favour. Because then they can get the players back. Obviously on the fast break, which is what Casey will look to employ. That is when St. George's are vulnerable. With the wing back slowing, getting back, Campbell and Hans. Tenant for St. George's College. Oh, 
Shakes, Kennedy. Will come to Gibbs. Shakes tries to find Richards. He does. Richards on the ball. Always an ear of anticipation when he has the ball. Plays it out. Looks to be Reese. Sends it across. But it comes to this man. Looks to be number 11, Reed. He gets the return ball. Plays it up. That's Burkett. 10 goals for the number 10, Brian Burkett. Holding off Samuel, Samuel Shakes. By him there. Takes it for Kingston College in the center circle. Good offensive progress. Stopped at that time. Comes wide to Kennedy. McLean fired way over the top. The Vuvuzelas are already out, Chris Taylor. Yeah, lots of anticipation around this encounter. I think the fans are fully warmed into the affair, yet I'm sure a lot of cheetahs in, diff in the different camps, even from a fan perspective. Not often these two teams meet, but when they do, it's usually a blockbuster. Can't forget that 2018 final. A 3-2 win to Kingston College, which would have been the last time they met. And what an encounter that was. So that straight to goalkeeper Tajari Lee, who actually converted a penalty in one of their recent matches. That was against Waterford High School. Matt is on the ball. Gets by Murray. Doesn't get the return ball as he was trying to play the give and go with Ashani Kennedy. It's actually throwing for Kingston College. St. George's College thought they had it. Head boy Joel Campbell and captain Joel Brown, sorry. Ball comes across. Richards. Nothing there, says the referee, Stefan Dua. Their experienced referee, Stefan Dua, FIFA Central referee. Been around quite a while, Stefan Dua. Here is the play. He was looking for it. Yes, yeah. he was. And had he probably asked the official there, he probably would have been booked for simulation. Just got up and, get, and got on with the game. Good to see. Had an interesting chat with his father, Adele Richards, the coach of Papine. And they come from a sporting family. Adele Richards played cricket, did track and field, the current jumps coach for Kingston College. He actually did hurdles alongside him at Kingston College. And his younger brother, Adil's Richard, Adil Richards' younger brother, Nick Richards, was actually drafted uh, in the NBA. Nick Richards for the Charlotte Hornets. So, big family. That's a pedigree. Definitely. Now you understand why, where the height that he has comes from. That's Dejon Richards. Just in for great things. Just 16 years of age, Richards. Could never tell. Well, I guess if you really look into his face, you see the youth. Comes in the box. Gibbs tries the shot, but it's blocked. Picked up easily by Dejon Davis. Has been a part of the Phoenix Academy for quite a while as well, Richards. Went overseas to Spain on a trial at Real Sociedad. Great experience for him. Jackson! Oh my word! Beautifully done! Just what Jackson silences the partisan crowd! the run of play. This man has opened the score in for St. George's College. A beautiful header to Dara Lee. Didn't see much about that one. And SDGC the chant now echoing in the National Stadium East Field. The customary hug. What St. George's College match? Don't you see that one? Here's the play again. Beautiful ball sent up by the number six. Rashad Hans 
lifted over the defensive line and he was in the right place at the right time beautiful header he rose with majesty and Lee was fully beaten Kingston College will have to respond fifth goal of the season for Joshua Jackson certainly against the run of play lovely delivery by hands it was as well just had to redirect it Jackson who was out for some time with a dislocated shoulder got injured early in the season and he's been back with a bang I fancy that an encounter like this will do Kingston College a lot of good they haven't really been tested and as they progress in the season they will need such tests Mattis over the crossbar surprised here that the goal kick was given I thought there was a slight touch over the bar good pace behind that hit from Matisse look at it here lots of dangerous players that was good difficult technique on the half volley probably just cruising over the bar in the end on the half volley yeah didn't get the touch a lot of venom in that one I don't think they'll be too worried Kingston College they have Found goal scoring easy. That shakes to Kennedy. McLean, Reese, Richards sends it across, trying to find Mattis. Brings it on the control, does Mattis. Brings shakes into the game. Audacious attempt there. Shakes. Played out now by St. George's. Shakes. McLean to Reese. Nine of their 11 players in the opposition box. Kingston College really looking to press. I'm sure that was the right idea though. On the counter now, St. George's College on the left-hand side. Whisper. Doing well there is the player from... Looks to be War. Getting rid of the danger there. Kimoy War. Kennedy finds... Richards Good challenge by Henry timed it well very tricky player Richards so deceptively fast has a bit ability to cut in on the left foot but will also go down the line as well that is to take the corner for Kingston College. Sends it across. Heads go up. Goes to the back. Looks to be Sal. Robert Sal. The centre back. He's up. Finds Kennedy. Kennedy didn't get enough power on that one and a deflection took it easily to goalkeeper to John Davis in a little bit de better defensively now St. George's wing backs getting back and allowing more solidity in the back line that goal conceded just a third goal Kingston College have conceded this season one against Arden, in, one against Calabar in the opening match, one against Meadowbrook, and then this one. Something for Raymond Watson to think about. He's remained seated. Neville Bell, though, on his feet. The captain, Brown, sends it across. Good head of that. The positioning of this player was good. Kino Murray. Has some height about him, Murray, the number 20. Hasn't scored so far this season, but good attempt. 
That was a nice delivery by Joel Brown as well, and that's challenging for it. Kennedy has done some good work for Kingston College on the left side there, but now it's with St. George's College. That play broken up only just Murray. Burkett, slick pass to Brown, the captain, sends it in. Out. Mattis plays it to Wall. Brown wants to put it into the box every time he gets it, but has to show a bit of versatility as well. Reese fakes it. Jabir Taylor plays it now back to South. St. George's College now on the counter. Let's see Burkett plays it across. Just too long. Let's see Jackson on the end of that one, or trying to get on the end of that one. Running the lines well, Jackson Burkett with the apology. Six assists to him already, Brian Burkett, to go along with his 10 goals, very talented left foot. And that one was probably a little bit too close to the keeper, so it went out of play. Foul there against Dijon Richards. If you notice when the ball goes on to that side, backup comes immediately. Slight drizzle. Four hands. Felt a slight drizzle just a while ago. I wonder what that will do for the playing conditions here. McLean sends it over. Defensive header there, clears it. Corner kick for Kingston College. Their second of the afternoon. Matty sends it across. Played out quickly by St. George's College. Seems to be a switch now. Reese coming more to the left. Play. Strong challenge coming in from the captain, Bayam. Of course, early days yet. Well, what a win this would be for St. George's. They meet each other twice in a week. So today and then next week, Saturday as well, as we see the challenge from Bayam just look clumsy. But yeah, win here for St. George's would take them joint top with KC on 21 points. Of course, as it stands now, KC based on goal difference would still be ahead. They currently have a 35 goal difference compared to, a, well, a 34 now compared to a 30 for St. George's. So yeah, lots to play for. And of course, that in itself would alter the seeding positions because we do go from the first round into the second round, which is a seeded round, home and away. First, the first seed will play the 32nd, second against the 31st, and so on. So, lots to play for. Actually, I was doubling the teams in the Manning Cup. <laughs> it's actually first against 16th. In the Da Costa Cup, it's the first against 32nd. But only six teams will go through from the first round to the second round in the Manning Cup. Burkett with a free kick. Straight to goalkeeper to Jari Lee. Taylor intercepts that one. 
plays Burkett, who is hounded by Shakes. Sends this one up. Gibbs and company chase. Falls to Richards. Richards for the strike! Just wide of the upright. Deflected as well, so it will be a corner. Willing to take the shot on the right foot. Good to see. Has decided to somewhat switch switch to the left hand side, Richards. Here's a player coming in again. Yeah, well blocked. Had by not Sheikhs. Been... Not Sheikhs, sorry. Corner for Kingston College comes in. Header on! Oh dear me. Another corner. Another corner. Walk with it, corner once more. St. George is clear quickly. Reese now. Finds McLean. He's under pressure from Jackson, but he plays it out wide. Looks to be Kennedy. Sends it across now. Trying to find the target man. But instead it goes for a corner kick again for Kingston College. Good spell of pressure. The tempo has it dropped marginally. The slightest of margins. Certainly not using the direct long balls as we saw earlier over the defense. And that's partly because of the defensive remedy of St. George's. Corner kick. <laughs> assistant had put up his flag initially but I think he realized it was off the defender so wouldn't have been offside John Davis there mops up the ball but yeah agreed now that St. George's have gotten the lead wing back sitting a little bit more just to give that added protection <laughs> So yeah, they force KC to try and play between the lines instead of that long ball all the time. Great ball. Good intention there for a header from Mattis, but didn't quite work. Shakes plays through. Richards goes it to the byline, but he plays it out. That's a goal kick. statement by St. George's in the first 27 minutes here. A team who haven't won a Manning Cup since 2012. Richards forced all the way to the byline and he couldn't get the cross. had already gone saying that this man the number 10 Dejon Richards was obstructing the defensive line of St. George's College allowing Gibbs to get an open run he almost set a peak look at it here or did he from the replay it seems he didn't he didn't figure Stefan Noir was saying that he was in the same line of play and that's why he made the call so he was automatically involved that was my original thought as well when I heard the call Gibbs now Didn't quite across Kennedy on that occasion. Kennedy's been quite busy so far, Shani Kennedy. Four goals, two assists. Casey number 13, he's gone to that right hand side now. And has found quite a bit of space, but his delivery hasn't been 
accurate enough so far. Burkett, beautiful touch. Ball over the top. Goalkeeper to Jarly. Has to be separated. Stefan Duar condescends to calm the temper of goalkeeper to Jarly. Not sure why that was necessary at all. Because Jackson has a right to challenge for the ball. As he did. Can't see much in it there. Didn't lead with the arm either. But it was Jackson who beat Lee from eight yards. He's probably still upset about that. Punt up field by Davis. Robert Sow doing, I think, the wise decision there because Jackson has been an aerial threat for St. George's College. Taylor, hounded by Kennedy, comes to Jackson, trying to play through Taylor, goes out for a throw in. That's a poor pass this time by Kennedy. Good ball that. Can it find this man, Richards? Takes it. Still has it. That's a foul. That's a penalty. That is a penalty. In the 32nd minute, he was knocking, knocking, and knocking. Great display of skill to keep on the feet, but he was brought down eventually, keep the ball close to him. Yeah, knew what he was doing. Richards by just slowing down the defense, and yeah, that was an error challenge there by the skipper. Didn't need to jump in like that. Yeah, that's a bit disappointing from Joel Brown. Not sure what he would have achieved by even playing the ball there. And should have just been looking to shadow him maybe in the 80 yard because there were defenders behind as well. To Sean Mattis to take the spot kick. Oh, he skies it! He skies it! Has to be consoled by the rest of the team for Kingston College but to the glee of St. George's College the gift that they gave away has been returned didn't settle at all Matisse hasn't scored so far this season and that story continues way over the bar almost looked like he rushed it as well he, he almost caught us off guard as well in terms of didn't take when he was going to kick yeah. Yeah. here's St. George's we just get the feeling that it could cost them. Back! Oh, Javier Taylor rattles the crossbar there. The danger not yet averted. Or is it? Nice ball into the box again. Taylor taking it one time to the far corner. Right decision. Just a couple inches too high though. Xavier Taylor, two goals and two assists to his name already. The ball was slightly getting away from him. So yeah, that extra stretch created the extra lift. So St. George's survive. Can they punish Kingston College for not taking that advantage a while ago? I reckon that the confidence factor was a part of the reason why Mattis was elected to take the spot kick there, the penalty. Hasn't scored all season, as you mentioned, Chris. So just to 
going to break that jinx. Penalty certainly would have been a great opportunity for that. But it just didn't work on his favor. Gibbs. War. Too long by him, able to clear. So takes no chances with that one, Christy. Yeah, Jackson was closing as well. There's Ludla Bernard, former head coach of Kingston College. His alma mater as well. He'll be thinking to himself he's been here before and found the way he's back. Jackson there down. Coach Bell there getting the troops ready. Thought that attention would have been given on the field of play, but he was brought off. So now play resumes. That's the goal there from Joshua Jackson. Beautiful ball lifted over by Hans. Gibbs sends it across. Clear just in time. Comes now to Wall for Kingston College. Shakes. Sends it out wide. Finds. Well, he was offside, wasn't he? Kennedy. His brother of Andre Nita, Chad Nita, St. George's old boy. Of course, Andre, one of our main camera crew. The role of the super keeper, certainly. Being adapted there by Tajari Lee. Shakes with it to his captain by a bit of a rotation policy employed by Raymond Watson and company when it comes to penalty takes this is your fourth penalty and it was your fourth different kicker all over the top there just going safely to Dijon Davis for St. George's not sure the thinking behind that generally you would find that you have a designated kicker unless he's not on the field but yeah they rotate. One Interesting to see if Mattis will still be in the rotation after that. Won the Manning Cup last year on penalties. So perhaps the rotation. Burkett now sends it across. So clears it. Burkett trying the lunge there. Perhaps the play back off Robert Waugh, but didn't get that done. The drums are coming now. Matt is there, nicknamed Prophet. Will he come with a divine touch after that howler? Wall back to shake. Shakes. Good touch that. Mattis couldn't get it back to Gibbs. Kennedy and the Taylor. Kennedy to Mattis. Unable to work it through to Kennedy. Played out by St. George's College. 
and that was Reese waiting on the right hand side for their number seven. Do like how Kingston College create their plays, the use of the ball, they certainly share it a lot. Obviously it's pretty obvious their most dangerous player. But still they use both flanks pretty well. He sends it across, it's filled by the keeper. Oh dear me. Off the line. Richards with a reflex action shot. But there was enough defensive players for St. George's to avert the danger. Spilled there by the keeper. Didn't Instinctive get shot that for Richards. Yeah, didn't get the power behind it either. Richards was an awkward height, so a difficult technique as well. And there are more than there are quite a few defenders back to clear the lines. Low corner. Mattis. Plays it across. Overhead. Oh dear me. So they're trying the spectacular. I tell you if that had gone on, there would be rapturous applause in the entire National State of East complex. Gibbs to Kennedy. Shielded well by Jaheim Henry. Chris Taylor, I'm not sure if you know your music. The exact rhythm that's being played, if you could tell me. It's heritage week. He does dance up. Certainly can't figure out that one. Whatever it is, St. George's are enjoying the rhythm. If Kingston College will figure out how to get a goal. Quite a few schools having Heritage Day celebrations yesterday. To the opposing player, Reed. Foul given Reed against Wall. The tempo definitely rising. Gerard Morrisili must be reminded of crop over or another festival there in Barbados. Wherever you are in Barbados watching this encounter, your local man is here enjoying the scenery as well. Yellow car, yellow car there shown to, to Sean Mattis. on the play. St. George's plays it over the top. Jackson there. So good aerial is Jackson. Reed to Brown. Shakes there. Fouling Brown. They're trying to take that one quickly. Confirmation there. The yellow card just shown to, sh to Sean Mattis. Jump certainly picking up extra now. Joel Brown will take this Anticipation of a big delivery. It comes across. Dejara Lee had to punch it quickly. And that's another strike from Javier Taylor. In the 44th minute. He rattled one earlier. But this time, the only thing that rattles is the net. 
2-0 for St. George's College. Shell shock inside the National Stadium field. The Kingston College supporters. This time no stretch from Xavier Taylor. And gets the hook from Neville Bell as well. His third of the season. And it was great execution. Not the best punch from Lee. And right into the path of Taylor who had fine-tuned his right foot earlier and now this one was precision to its best at its best into the far corner wow st george's 2 kc nil what a first half for the light blues not many persons would have expected that score line but can kingston college respond this man will have a lot to say about it. Dejon Richards is in the box, been hounded, did well there. Rashad Hands. Still with Kingston College. Reese. Cut down. Now to the scorer, Taylor. By him there under a lot of pressure from Jackson well Kingston College had only conceded two goals in seven matches they have now conceded two more in 45 minutes Kingston College to Shakes. The final pass in for Kingston College has certainly let them down. They've not been able to get the crosses with the kind of accuracy, accuracy that they would need. Jackson there pounding the defenders he really looks menacing but what St. George's have done well after the first 10 minutes is to get very narrow in defence so they've closed the lines they have forced Casey to go wide but when Casey have then played the ball into the box they have the reinforcements in charges, so they have made that slight change very early and they have done a lot better since then Casey still with a lot of the ball but as I said they don't look as menacing great ball to Burkett still has it almost fell in the path of Jackson before being played out by Blaine Vine the captain he's smiling he knew something was about to take place and there's a swagger about the St. George's College team now leading 2-0 They have liked how Kingston College have looked aerially in the defense. But that's the whistle for the first half. That man scoring the second goal, that man the first goal, W. Taylor and Joshua Jackson, respectively. And it's St. George's College 2, Kingston College nil from the National Stadium East Field.
to the National Stadium East Field for this Group A encounter. The top of the table clash, Kingston College and St. George's College at the halftime. St. George's leads two goals to nil. Here are the halftime highlights. Referee Stefan Dwar, Kingston College started brightly. And they had this attack through Nashrada Gibbs, who really took a touch too many. But in the 14th minute of play, here is a delightful ball that's going to be played in through Rashid Hans. And a beautiful header from this man, Joshua Jackson, beaten to Jarrelly in goal. 1 0 for St. George's College against the run of play. And beautiful in the air was a Jackson. Tajari Lee had no idea about that one. He has been an aerial threat all afternoon. Kingston College would continue on their offensive thrust. Ball played up. And uh, that one came to Mattis who fired over the top. It was really a ferocious strike but he couldn't get it on target. St. George's College would continue. Delightful ball this to be played in by Joel Brown, the captain. Jackson there playing it over the crossbar. Kingston College though, continuing on their offensive thrust. Richards there being played in and being brought down by Joel Brown. Penalty kick for Kingston College. And the drama would continue when Tashawn Mathis skied it way over the top. Much to the delight of the St. George's supporters. They would continue on their attack. Burke is there, fine across. Not coming to anyone in the box, but it rebounded to Taylor who rattled the crossbar. But Kingston College again would continue. This one being played in. Richards with a strike, but just cleared right in time. But there was enough individuals to clear it though for St. George's College. Matt is trying to play that one. Byam with the overhead kick. Not getting the kind of power that he wanted. But a defensive howler there. Didn't play off the ball to Jarry Lee from that Joel Brown delivery. And Zebra Taylor, as he did earlier, was right in the right place at the right time. And he played it in. 2 0 for St. George's College. Feisted in the air as the score went up for them. So here are the first half match statistics. Eight shots for Kingston College, four for St. George's, one on target, three on target for St. George's, seven fouls for Kingston College, five for St. George's College. Kingston College with a solitary yellow card, two offsides for them, one for St. George's College, six corners for Kingston College, one for St. George's College, one save for Kingston College, and the line share of the possession, 59%. But what matters? 2-0 for St. George's College over Kingston College. We go to the water break from the fans with Gerard. Thanks a lot, Dean. Well, it's hot here at the stadium East. You can see the crowd behind me. They look absolutely radiant in their colors. And a lot of comments coming from the social media, uh, particularly uh, from YouTube, where we have the match streaming. All of these comments are in part to us, so please forgive me if I don't get it right. I'm going to attempt. Uh, the Advocate re Review, he says, the match hotty. Uh, that's the way he says that the match is hot. And uh, Kevin says that ball they got on Mars. And he was talking about the free, the, the penalty kick that went over the bar. And uh, Bama, George's defender, Jaheem Amabo, Boy, that's his boy. So he shouted out, Jaheem, Jaheem, I hope you can hear that. And of course, uh, Amani says, yo, man, them KC and JC final again. Who knows? But right now, George is in large and in charge and in control. But Marlo says not to rule out the, the, J, the KC side because the number 15 and of course, number 10, which is the John Richards, has a lot of, of, a lot of, 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 of skill, talent. No VAR. One more, he says, Kachimata, Kachimata lie. <laughs> yeah, so that's enough from online. Let's go to Janae, who has some fans in the stands. Where is she? Yes, I'm in I'm here with the water break. I'm with the fans in the stands. Fans from both Kingston College and St. George's. KC, how do you think about the match? What do you think about the match? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm enjoying the match.
not. No, Georges have done very well in the first half. Um, we have been playing, I think, the better football, but that's not what matters in football. Scoring matters. Scoring matters. And, and Georges, Georges have taken their, they have taken their chances. And but we know that it, also that the game has two halves. We know that we will come back in the second half because we are forties. We will never give up. And I, the brave name, and I cannot. I'm just looking forward to next week for repeat again. Well, Casey says that they want to come back with the victory. You guys are tuning up from Casey. What do you think about the match so far? You know what? I've listened to the Casey spectators, and the one that do the interview is is totally right. But guess what? You see, in certain games, like a game against St. George's and Casey, it takes more than just playing football. Amen. It's got to take the heart and the guts. And that is what St. George's is showing right now. And I just want to say to all these players, continue doing what you're doing. And come in the second half and do even better. And show them that this is it. St. George's College is football. St. George's College is football.
NBA op opening night on Sportsmax. Uh, Philadelphia 76ers at Boston Celtics. Tuesday, 6.30 p.m., 7.30 in the rest of the Caribbean. And also opening night, LA Lakers at Golden State Warriors. Uh, Tuesday, 9 p.m. in Jamaica, 10 p.m. for the rest of the Caribbean. The SSFL on Sportsmax, St. Anthony's College versus Fatima College, Tuesday, 2.30 p.m., 3.30 ECT. And the El Clasico on Sportsmax 2, Real Madrid versus Barcelona, Sunday, 9.15 a.m., 10.15 ECT, on your home of champions. Second half action, ready to... Get on the way. St. George's leading Kingston College. Two goals to nil. St. George's in their traditional light blue and white. Purple and white. The colors for Kingston College. Spirit thought again for the quality of the jerseys. Really can't be understated. Or overstated rather. The whistle sends off the second half action. Kingston College have a lot of work to do. They have won in recent memory, 3-2 against St. George's College. But a certainly different encounter, that one. Yeah, that was a final in 2018. A match which St. George's were leading by two goals to one and had an opportunity on the line, Young Harris skied it there number nine and seconds later it was two all in case he went on to score the winner Nathan Thomas the hero Richards getting this one beautiful pass from Shakes finds Reese Reese plays it high up in the air safely held by Dijon Davis the goalkeeper for St. George's College St. George's actually have defeated KC since 2015 so it's been a while Richards now. Can he strike? Oh, he finds the side netting. Not on the favoured left foot. He yeah, skewed it in the end. The ball took an awkward bounce. Couldn't get his foot wrapped around it. In the end, Richards. Not afraid to strike with the right boot by any means, but as you can see, just took a weird bounce there and actually went slightly away from him. Couldn't get the foot around it. Good build up play by Casey, though. Here they come again. Mattis! Oh! A holo from Dijon Davis, and Mattis has his redemption! The Prophet has brought life into the encounter for Kingston College. Dijon Mattis! Sweet redemption, Chris Taylor! After another holo! This time from the goalkeeper and Mattis, he must be relieved. Yeah, penalty miss in the first half. But Kingston College still kept coming. And no surprise that they've been even been able to eventually break down the defense. Good build-up play here. And yeah, that's a poor mistake there by Davis in goal. Good first touch by Mattis Doe just to take it in stride and push himself behind the defence line of St. George's. But Davis, you've got to be saving that, Dijon Davis. Unfortunate for him, joy for KC. Game on. First goal for Dijon Mattis. The jinx has been broken. And let's see what St. George's will say about that. Jackson is through on goal. Offside. It was also the first assist of the season for Nashorda Gibbs, who has seven goals, and that was his first assist at number 15. Robert Sound there. Almost left through Jackson again. Has to play it out quickly to Reese. Plays it in the center. Matt is there, hounding. Murray, here's Mattis again. Plays through Gibbs. Or is it Richards? Richards on the left. He's brought down, but the advantage sees Nashorn Gibbs bring Kingston College level. They call him Tommy Lee, and there's nothing that can stop his entry into the goal territory. The 
Shorter Gibbs to all for Kingston College. What a match! It's only three minutes in the second half. Drama and drama all mingled together, Chris Taylor. Well, the halftime team talk certainly worked. Richards will get the assist. Would have been a penalty. Play the advantage. Well done, Stefan Duarte, the official. And Mattis again in the middle of the park. A beast there. Great pace by Richards. Cutting in onto the favoured left foot. Brought down by Davis. And Gibbs with his eighth of the season. And Richards with his tenth assist of the season. Such a big play is it? Uh, for Kingston College is Richards, 10 assists, 13 goals, 23 goal contributions from eight games. That's mega. They have never stopped attacking KC. They're just being a little bit more clinical now. Had a few openings in the first half. Let me tell you, as I said. Here's it. Richards trying to get through some real blockbuster matches between these two teams over the years. We remember the 3-2 well, I can tell you in 2010 there was a match at Constant Spring where Kingston College led by three goals to nil with about 25 minutes left and guess what? Drama. Yeah. <laughs> St. George's won by four goals to three. Many of Kingston College supporters had nightmares of Ken on Don, Pim Pim. Yeah. Perhaps one of my favorite forwards in the Manning Cup over the last decade, 12 years, a dozen years, yeah. Uh, Devon Speedy Williams. He was, in fact, he didn't play the first half. He was off on school duties doing his assignment. Got there for his, his SATs. Got there for the second half, and it was just a totally different game when he came on. Mattis with the corner, sends it across. Not cleared. Bayam was trying as well. Still not cleared by St. George's College. And Mattis had a swing there. St. George is now able to clear. They play up with Jackson, trying to link up with Reed. Now Taylor only found this man, Samuel Shakes, the central midfielder, plays it out. The irony of that match, the man who scored the winner, Rohan Roy, from Kingston College initially, came to St. George's and was touted for the whole game. He was chaired the whole game. He was a Judas, a lot of name calling. He scored the winner. And what a moment it was for him. He ran over to the Kingston College bench and started to point fingers at all kinds of gesticulation. He did more than that actually, Chris yes. Taylor. <laughs> yeah, we leave the rest in the locker. <laughs> the annals that, of history, you have to dig deep to get that one, but we won't say that on here. But by the way, neither team won the, won the Manning Cup that year. It was actually Jamaica College who had, took it. Had a triple crown that year, Jamaica College. Yeah, but what a match that was. And to this day, that's the most exciting battle between these two teams that I've seen. That one even beat the 3-2 final for me. For a neutral. For a neutral, yeah. Kingston College now on the ascendancy. Trying to play through Gibbs. Here's Taylor for St. George's College. Plays it out wide. Finds the captain, Joel Brown. Almost dispossessed, but he sends another delightful ball. Can it find Burkett? No, he doesn't. Taylor now. Will he go from distance? Finds Burkett. Has to be closed down. Find it wide in the end. On the favoured left foot, I would have fancied his chances from that angle. Brand Burkett. Ten goals on the season for him. And probably would have been looking to go to the far side of the goal, but screwing off the outside of the boot. Let's see how St. George's response to this, though. So, some of my questions have been answered. How can Kingston College play under pressure? 2 0 at the half. 2 2. Within five minutes. That's a response. Fatic 1 2. Sloppy 
pass that for Mattis. They'll have to be a bit much sharper. Gibbs gets it, plays through. Almost got through to Richards. Richards by the byline. Oh, he goes by one. Gets in the box. And Jaheim Harris, Jaheim Henry rather, did well there for St. George's College to pick his pocket. Aerial balls have continued in my mind to give a bit of problems to Kingston College in defense. They haven't been convincing in that regard in my mind. Reed stripped by Kennedy. Now it shakes. Sends it up. A bit too far. I think Richards is saying he wants to play it to foot. If they're going to play the cross field ball. Great attendance here at the stadium East Field. Rampart, as you would expect for this kind of an encounter. 38 Manning Cup titles between these two teams. Lots of pedigree. 18 Walker Cup um, titles between them as well. Tied for the most with nine. Both these schools. That's the St. George's contingent. They will be shell shocked at the moment. It's hanging a bit. Still lots of time though. Gibbs. Richards. Richards has shot from that distance before. But he was always off balance, wasn't he, on that occasion. Great teams, these two teams, these two schools have put together over the years as well. As I said, St. George's haven't won since 2012. But yeah. This hasn't been their longest barren run because do remember they went from 1959 till 1983 without a title. Here's Richards. Richards still unable to get by. Rashad Hands, who had that beautiful assist in the first half for the opening goal for St. George's College. Line share of the possession with Kingston College. Gibbs is through. No, he isn't. Bime there. Taking it down. Well watched all over the globe, of course. This kind of match because there's a lot of the old boy fraternity outside of Jamaica, massive as well, especially in North America and Canada for both these schools. Over 4,000 viewers on YouTube alone. Wow. Blockbuster. Richards. They continue to try to force him right. That was a tackle. He played the advantage initially. So yeah, big deal for these schools. But as I said, between 1959 and 1983, St. George's went through a real barren run. Two decades without a title. That 59 team would have been a great one with Peter Chevans and Winston Dynamite Lynn, who passed away a few years ago. There's a challenge. Thought he got ball as well. Did Murray. Stefan Duar didn't like the, the follow through. But yeah, Dynamite did pass away. They had a really good period in the 50s, St. George's. And then the 83-84 with the Zadie brothers and Andrew Price. Of course, Christopher Zadie passed away a few week, a couple of weeks ago to cancer. But yeah, that was a good period as well for St. George's. And then that 92 team, which went undefeated until the Olivia Shield, <laughs> of course. <laughs> So this was the first goal, beautiful delivery by Hans. And look at that header. 
Joshua Jackson there, his fifth of the season, just after 14 minutes and against the run of play. Oh, that was well redirected by Jackson, who was out with a shoulder injury for some time and has been performing well. Then, not the best clearance by Lee and it fell to Taylor and that was a beautiful finish into the far corner for his third of the season. 2-0 going into the half and Kingston College, Raymond Watson and the rest of the management team really shaking up the boys and Mattis, the man who missed from the spot in the first half, finding the back of the net for his first of the season but really should have been dealt with by goalkeeper Davis. And then this moment, Dijon Richards cutting in onto the left-hand side is favoured and the finish from Gibbs for his eighth of the season, two all after 49 minutes, game on. And what an exciting encounter. It continues to be big free kick this for KC in a dangerous position. I would have rather the right footer, but I guess with the quality of Richards, you never know from this range. You really never know. He has struck from distance many a times. The referee has him waiting. Blows the whistle. Jean Richards just wide. I think it was a favoured angle for him. And even if that was on target, we would have counted on Davis to save that one. It was a real hole for Davis, that second goal. And probably needs a, a save, the first goal. Yeah. Probably definitely needs a, a save under his belt to really rejuvenate him. Here's St. George's College. He looked to find Taylor. Good run to the left. Pounded by Shakes. Sends him back out wide. Make that Sow who did the challenge there. Shakes. Judge the foul of Burkett. Here's the replay there. Burkett made it look a lot worse than it really was. A <laughs> lot, lot of acrobatics by Birkin, but he's fine. I guess he convinced referee Duarte to give him the free kick. Not Much the shape's displeasure. He's wondering how. Adrian Reed behind it. To remember Adrian Reed played in the Premier League last season for Cavalier. Lots of experience. Adrian Reed Jr. The number 11. He's been quite quiet so far for St. George's. We'd love to see more of him. Having gotten that experience at the Premier League level, this is where it needs to count. I find that a few of the players that have that experience and this has been a critique I have over the years. They have not demonstrated it at the schoolboy level. Reed straight to the wall. Now Kingston College able to break. Shakes was trying to play through Gibbs, who was a waiting candidate, but it was blocked by St. George's College. Gibbs stabs it to Mattis. Make that Mattis now. Who takes it? Still Mattis. Sends it across. Oh dear me. That could have been dangerous. That could have been an own goal. It was dangerous. And yeah, so luckily Matt for McDonald's. Yeah, McDonald's touch. He was worried for a moment. And just going past the upright. Good strength by Mattis though. Certainly coming in into his own as the second half progresses. Here he is with the corner kick, sends it across. Doesn't go across. War plays it in. Mattis again, like a bully. Oh, Tajari Lee had to do something special there. Make that Dijon Davis. Good save by Davis. He Amen. needs that. He needs that, Davis. Just, I was just going to say, yeah, just you to mentioned it earlier. Yeah, just back up. But Mattis, certainly a beast within that midfield. Very strong player there, number eight. He's been excellent right throughout the season. That was probably going wide, but the deflection carried it back on target. And Davis did well. Another player down for St. George's, Joshua, Joshua Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. 
few of the substitutes for Kingston College uh, now getting warm. One of their regular starters was out for today. That's Darnell Edwards, their central midfielder, their number six. I love his passing range, Edwards. George is now going to make a change of their own. Raheem McIntosh, a two-goal man, will be coming on their number 30. Wow. And the goal scorer goes off, Joshua Jackson, who has had his injury issues early in the season. And not sure how serious this knock is, but he's off. See you rocking to the music now, Chris Taylor. Hard to ignore those drums and the traps. Lejay does. <laughs> Richards now with Kingston, for Kingston College. He goes on the right foot. Not afraid to shoot. That's good. Didn't have the power to really threaten goalkeeper Davis there. Kennedy now. Matis. Now with Gibbs. Sends it in. Reed now will clear for St. George's College. Only to Bayer. Shakes. On the right hand now with Reese who plays Mattis. Trying to find Gibbs. Oh, he didn't do enough there. Goalkeeper Davis has got to come there. Was very tentative and could have cost him. Luckily for him, the touch wasn't good from Gibbs. But I think he, he had a really good opportunity there, Gibbs, to put that into the back of the net. Muffed his chance. Reese with the ball in. Played out. Shakes. Has to be a foul. Casey certainly piling on the pressure here. St. George's need the ball. They need some ball possession. Clear foul there. Keanu Murray. I definitely favor Mattis from this distance, but quite a few of them are there. I think this is a bit far. I'll be looking to get something into the box, a bit more creativity. Instead of a wild bang. Has remained calm, Raymond Watson, and the technical director, Andre Edwards. He was up at the start of the second half and a lot of celebration when they got that first goal so he knew what it meant to get a goal early in the half and then to get the double brought up. I think based on the tempo of the game and the momentum, Casey must like their chances in terms of finding the winner. They look a lot more likely at this point. They have the possession, they're using the ball better as well. So as it goes on, St. George's are going to get tired. coming into this match as we mentioned the second round is all about the seeds it will be first against 16th second against 15th and so on coming into this game Casey were the number one seed in the Manning Cup St. George is number seven on the table of course those those seedings change every game based on the results 16 teams will go through from the first round to the second round home and away fixture in the second round and then they go into a, a quarter final zone of course those will be eight teams two zones of four and then the top two will advance to the semi-finals Lord Labanad looks a lot happier now considering Casey have gotten back into it. no pressure on him though. 
perhaps if they were still down. Yeah. Resigned after last season, decided to concentrate at the senior level, at the Premier League level. Andrew Edwards coming in as a technical director and Raymond Watson promoted to the head coach role. What will be the strategy of Deshaun Mattis from some 25 yards out? Mattis. Oh dear me! What a miss. Gibbs again. Gibbs again with a miss. He scored one, Gibbs, but I can tell you he's had about four really good chances. That was poor by Davis in the goal, and how did Gibbs miss that? Well, there was a slight seen... deflection there that brought it, uh, that misguided the ball, and Davis wasn't able to really get it as he would normally. Yeah, but the deflection was was early. It wasn't a late deflection, so he had a lot of time to see Davis and needed to have done better. Luckily for him, Gibbs, who probably should have gone with the left foot to finish that, went with the right and it went wide. Here he is again. We've seen we've seen some impressive misses in this in these fixtures in this fixture over the years. Of course, Harris in 2018 probably costing charges at Manning Cup then. Well, we'll see the ramifications of this one. Interesting use of the term impressive miss. <laughs> Here shakes. Trying to hack it over. He does look a bit suspect. Yeah, Davis certainly needs to get it together. His handwork hasn't been the best. Joel Brown there plays it out of touch. Throw in for Kingston College, taken quickly. Finds Richards, who's gone back over to the left. They've been able to keep him from using the left foot as he would really want to. Still influential though, Richards. Won a penalty, then well, wasn't converted by, Mat by Mattis. Yeah. Well, well would have got the second, yeah. but you got the assist for the goal. It's the cross by him at the back post. Didn't come to him. The John Davis there did well. Read now. Intercepted by McLean. That finds keep. Robert Sow. Not keeping the ball well, St. George's. Burkett, very few touches in the second half for him. Oh, dear me, he's giving it away. St. George's College will take the lead again. Brian Burkett. A defensive error of the highest magnitude. The gift that keeps on giving. Saw with the mistake. And just as we said, Burkett has had very few touches in the second half. He gets a magical one. Horrible pass there in the defence line. Good awareness by Burkett. And that's 11 on the season for the St. George's number 10. Good skill as well. Just to dink it around the keeper. And then he was never going to miss from that range. Wow. Just like that. Nothing going for them in the second half, St. George's. And then gifted a moment which they took 3-2 members of that score line now seeing even more the importance of that miss by Gibbs two really bad misses by Gibbs in the second half A lot for this KC team to live up to. They have had two titles in quick succession, one in 2018, both under Ludlow Bernard, and then one in 2021. Brought that big drought. Kingston College, many forget, probably, well, arguably the best schoolboy team of all time, that 1964 team. 
fact many don't argue anymore based on what they accomplished that was an amazing team Tony Keys, Trevor Jumpy Harris, Neville Oxford Franklin Morant, Lloyd McLean 10 out of those 11 players made the all schools team I can tell you there was a Brazil under 20 team that came down to Jamaica and they drew one all with them that all schools team 10 of them being KC players that's never been replicated in terms of the percentage of players from one team going into the national youth team or into the all schools team that year as well the, the big Cavalier team in the Premier League they actually beat that team by two goals to one, that KC schoolboy team. So lots of history. So they're getting ready to make a change at St. George's College. Xavier Taylor, the goal scorer, the second of the second goal comes out. And uh, Tishon O'Neill, number 18, comes in. He has two goals this season as well. player is Tishan O'Neill, well loved by the supporters. Let's see if he can live up to that billing. College get back in this one. Can they get back? Greece trying to find Gibbs. Strike there, ricocheted off the defender. Here's Matis. Greece with pace. Jamani McDonald says none of that. for the Sportsmax app moment brought to you by the Sportsmax app and it's the first goal of the encounter beautiful pass and a beautiful header by Joshua Jackson the pass they're coming from Rashad Hands and so graceful so elegant the header easy does it for Joshua Jackson that's the Sportsmax app moment There's Joshua Jackson, he's since been substituted, got a knock, and was replaced, big goal that was, 
and a priceless lead for St. George's. A win today will take them level on points with Kingston College. If the scoreline remains as it is though, Kingston College will still be in pole position based on goal difference. Change there for Kingston College, Ashani Kennedy coming out. And Romario Campbell enters the free as his replacement. Campbell uh, has scored one goal this season, one assist as well. Played last season as well. Romario Campbell plays in that attacking midfield role. Campbell on for Kennedy. Kennedy did did have a quite a good first half, especially in the wide wide areas. Picked up a knock of his own, and so had to be substituted. Casey in the last ten, or St George's in the last ten minutes or so, really doing a good job of keeping Richards quiet. Dejon Richards hasn't seen much of the ball. That's a good thing for the light blues. The sounds of the drum do cause you to think that the game is play being played at a high tempo than it really is. about the different cultures around the Caribbean earlier. I suppose crop over is really the soca version or the version of, of carnival in Trinidad or in Jamaica. They call it crop over but Nifka is their well their cultural celebration in Barbados which is very similar to our John Kuna here. Burkett finds McIntosh. McIntosh stripped of possession. Burkett again. Again for clearance. Burkett! Dangerous player Brian Burkett, especially when given space, does favour the left foot, but willing to try with the right as well. Always going wide. Sold the goalkeeper at first with the eyes that he was going to the far post and then just trapped into the near. A real drop in concentration in the back for Kingston College. And they've already paid the price once. Have to be careful. Certainly they Here's Reese. Mattis. Now, crossfield to buy him. Trying to find Richards. Richards! Straight to the keeper, Davis. Under real pressure there, Richards. Yeah, good technique though. Very easy to kick that well over the bar. Did well to keep it down. Good pace behind it as well. They need Richards now, Kingston College, especially in this in these moments. Here's Gibbs. Can he provide an assist? Excellent defending there. What a challenge that was coming in from Jaheim Henry. Mario Campbell there has brought a bit of life on that left hand side. Ken 
players in the, on the park at the moment for Kingston College. Well, the 11th is now on. McLean just couldn't recover from that injury, Jaheim McLean. Here it comes. Played outside though. Brought on Barrett for you. Interesting change there. here on the ball. Much more of a defensive player, Barrett. McLean a lot more enterprising and Kingston College certainly do need a goal. At least. Here's Mattis now. Gets by hands. Mattis! Oh, he ran right into the defender. He yeah, did lift up his head. I'm not sure what he was trying to achieve there, Mattis. Did well initially, but should have released it. Reese trying to play through that gives again Raymond Watson there wonder what's going on in his mind speaking to a substitute but what he has done with bringing on Barrett he's put Barrett into that defensive midfield role to try and solidify the spine and the midfield area of KC and it's allowed Tejan Mattis who is now down with an injury to go higher up the pitch to create more problems but yeah he might be having another problem now done a lot of running Mattis this would have been the biggest test for KC by far of all the fixtures so far the sternest test would have probably come against Meadowbrook where they won by three goals to one and it wasn't necessarily the quali quality of the Meadowbrook team but more the complacency of Kingston College in that game George is battling really hard and when they have got their moments they have made it count they have been willing to give up the majority of the possession but they have made sure that the little possession they have had has been quality even when gifted exactly they have taken their chances Casey have missed quite a few he did get one gift yeah, I'm he sure that, that one yeah that miss from Gibbs will go down as one of the misses of the season for sure he's got the best of them Richards close marshaled by Rashid Hans trauma in this encounter
there for Kingston College. One of the substitutes will, will come on. Free kick in their own half. And they're in no rush, are they? Played up long. Again, South just doesn't get the header out with much conviction. Unable to clear. is there corner now for St. George's really didn't have much on it clearance from Kingston College equally unimpressive four minutes of time to be added on can Kingston College get something out of this encounter Is this through Brockhead? It's about game over now. It is about game over now. SDGC for Kingston College 2. But he really stretched the back line of Kingston College. Great pass. That's allowed the ball to come across his body as well. The fan favorite, the substitute, Tejon O'Neill with his assist. His first assist of the season at St. George's number 18. It was a lovely pass to Burkett. But what Burkett did was very intelligent, allowing it to come across his body to deny the KC defenders any chance of getting in a block onto his favorite left foot. And that left foot has the quality to bury it into the far corner. Can't give him that kind of space and time. It's a dozen for Brian Burkett on the season. And it's four for St. George's. They will have three points. Not many would have expected this scoreline at all. Especially with the early first half burst that Kingston College had. But the adage continues. Goals win games. With all the possession they've had. All the chances they've had. They've not buried them, have not been clinical, and Burkett, a brace on the afternoon. You could give him a scissors, he's a surgeon. Clinical. Hasn't necessarily had the busiest match, Brian Burkett, as St. George will make another substitution. And Matthew Spence is now on, who has had two assists in the season. But yeah, when he's been called upon Brian Burkett, he's got the job done. And he's a player who is substituted the St. George's number 10. But he's done his job. Big statement. Big statement by St. George's, it must be said. And even though Brian Burkett has got two goals, I want to make a big statement about the St. George's number 6 how good he has been Rashid Hans he has had an assist which came in the, the, for the first goal for Joshua Jackson but how he's managed Dujon Richard throughout the course of the game especially in the second half has been really good he's shut him down and he's had a big performance it certainly has and when you're shutting down a team who scored 38 goals in a season that's no mean feat eased off the ball that's a foul just outside the 18 yard box and I can tell you Richards has switched flanks on a couple of occasions just because of Hans I thought when the game started initially Hans didn't read the memo and he was caught too high in the first 10 minutes readjusted and since then he's been really good 
Well, I tell you this, last year's misery has become this year's mirth for St. George's College. Well, at least for the first round so far. Majority of these players were there last season. We spoke about that experience. So yes, they lost a lot of games, took a lot of blows, but the experience of that has helped them this season. And let me tell you, this team is still young. They have a couple of years to come, many of them. If Brad Burkett, who's played three seasons already in the Money Cup, he's only 17. Dejon Richards, can he do something special? Richards! Always over the top. And that's the end of this encounter. Stefan Dua has seen enough of this one. And St. George's College for Kingston College 2. Many persons would not have expected this result or even the scoreline. And even the play didn't suggest it at all either. But Brian Burkett with a brace. Joshua Jackson with one. And a gift. I tell you, a gift for Burkett. Really made the difference in the second half for St. George's College. Dijon Richards didn't have the kind of game he would have wanted. But there, the scoreline on your screen. St. George's College 2. Kingston, St. George's College 4, Kingston College 2. The full match highlights. Kingston College, of course, started very sprightly. And they had a, quite a few runs. Gibbs here taking a touch too many and didn't get the shot on. Goalkeeper Davis doing the business. But in the 14th minute of play, Jabir Taylor finds Rashid Hans. And he had a wonderful pass. He had many good passes from that angle. And Josh Joshua Jackson had the finish with perfection. That was the start of it for Rashid Hans the man of the match and that was a lovely delivery just to start off things Joshua Jackson redirecting it into the far post excellent for his fifth of the season Jackson Kingston College would continue on their offensive thrust and this ball was played up and it came to the number eight for Kingston College Sean Mattis who fired with fury but wasn't able to bring it on target that went over quite a few opportunities in the first 10 minutes or so for Casey but St. George's weathered the storm well Here's Richards until this moment. He was brought down by the challenge. number 12, Joel Brown. The captain. Poor challenge by him, and certainly a penalty. Mattis, though, didn't have the finish to the dismay of many of the Kingston College supporters and to the glee of St. George's College. They would come on their own offensive thrust, St. George's. Burkett there sending a ball inside. It came to Jabir Taylor, who rattled the crossbar. But that was a, an omen of what would come a few minutes later on for Taylor. But Kingston College, though, they continued on their offensive thrust. This ball in, and it was a gift, but he couldn't take the gift to Dijon Richards. Yeah, Here's good ball again. into the box. Awkward bounce here. Very difficult to get that done with power and easily managed. Casey continuing to come forward. This a kick to the near post causing problems. Mattis on this occasion getting it to the far post. Acrobatic. And probably a better finish should have been executed by Sow. And yeah, got it wrong and it went wide. But the, this pass from Joel Brown from the kick. Jabir Taylor taking it. And that was two goals to nil. It was a poor clearance from Tajari Lee in goal for Kingston College. And it fell beautifully to Taylor who made no mistake there. Just outside the 18-yard box. Get another goal for the season. Jabir Taylor is third for the season. But the second half started. And uh, Dejon Richards fired wide. But look at this pass that came to, to Sean Mattis. And that was a gift if ever there was one. Early Christmas for Mattis from the goalkeeper Dejon Davis. And look at that. Wasn't hard. And it just spilled out of his hands. A howler and you wonder how. Redemption for Mattis after that mistake. And then two minutes later, Kingston College on the front foot again. Matt here, Richards, the advantage played, Gibbs playing it into the back of the net. That was his first for the afternoon, Gibbs had many an opportunity after that, but 
thankfully for them he converted this one his eighth of the season not sure that gives had some chances in the first half which he should have done better and there would have been more to come Matis really causing problems in the middle of the park this was a good save from Davis because the deflection was taking it inside of the post and the acrobatic save the best of him in the second half then this moment Casey problems at the back so that was a horrible pass to his goalkeeper Lee really setting him up and Burkett was aware just look at Burkett tracking the run here and yeah got into the space a little deep over the keeper great skill and the left footed finish for his 11th of the season Burkett and he wasn't finished yet couldn't believe his luck Brian Burkett and took it well St George's a 3-2 lead against the run of play and then in stoppage time the icing on the cake the substitute O'Neill coming on look at this for a pass oh that's a lovely one time pass by O'Neill to Burkett who just allowed it to come across his body very well and that was a clinical finish into the far triangle that's how your coach to finish beyond the keeper and his left foot wasn't going to make a mistake a dozen on the season for Burkett and all three points for St George's College The full-time match statistics, 20 shots for Kingston College, 8 for St. George's, 7 of those on target for Kingston College, 5 for St. George's, 21 fouls, 11 for Kingston College, 1 yellow card for Kingston College, 2 offsides apiece, 10 corners for Kingston College, 2 for St. George's College, 4 saves for St. George's, 1 for Kingston College, the line share of the position, 52% for Kingston College, but the most important statistic, 4 goals for St. George's, 2 for Kingston College. The Digicel Man of the Match being awarded to the left back for St. George's College, Rashid Hans. And he's with Gerard downstairs. Thanks a lot, Dean and Chris Rashid. Congratulations to you. You are the man of the match. I hope that you can put that somewhere where you can look at it every day and see, uh, get some inspiration. Let me talk to you, though, about this win. How much does it mean to you as a player for St. George's College? Today we came here wanting to go to the top of the zone because it was very important first because we wanted to, to play a, a, strong, a, a, team, a strong team in the second round. We, want, we didn't want to get the best of the best in the second round. But we stick to the task and we were resolute defensively. We gave away two sloppy goals in the second half because we weren't, weren't right up top. We, got, we, weren't, we weren't pressing up top. But I guess we stuck to the task and we got it, we got it done in the end. Well, you were able to pick up an assist, but what was most impressive about your game was the way you shut down Whisper. Um, what was the game plan going in and how were you able to do it? Yeah, very good player, very good player. One of the best in Manning Cup right now. We have to give that to him. But um, we, we didn't really come into the game to try to stop him. We just wanted to, to give them as, as, le as less chances as possible. So that, that was really our task at hand. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was Rashid Hans there. The man of the match and all it's time to talk to coach Raymond Watson from the Kingston College camp coach you wanted to come into this game with and leave with a win um, but what's your assessment of the game overall uh, a very good game exciting game and I must say first congratulations to St. George's College they won the game they got the three points they played some good football I also will say I stand behind my team we made some lapses today Simple errors and we gave St. George's some goals but uh, next time around it won't be the same. Well coach, were you panicking at any point in time in this game? Me? Never in my life. I live for these moments. I love these games. Never panic. Well, you have uh, two games before you close out the first round. You have one against Waterford and then you have uh, St. George's College again. What is going to be the preparation like in between those two games? Well, we'll take a break tomorrow and then over the holidays we'll probably just do some of our 40 stuff. And, but we'll be preparing for Waterford firstly and then the return leg against St. George's College. Definitely, I need those three points. All right, Coach. Well, we'll Thank see you, you very much. Thank you so much. Time to talk now to assistant coach of St. George's College, Marcel Gale, who looks like a pretty happy man, Coach. What's your sum up? How do you sum up this game? I um, said before, to God be the glory. I mean, you know, earlier you asked me uh, what I expect for the guys. And I just thought we going to entertain the crowd today. I thought we, we did just that. I mean, I mean, kudos to the guys that they, they, they follow instructions. We talked it before. And they put on a spectacle of football today. I mean, six goal. I mean, we couldn't have some more. I mean, we'll try um, Kingston College. But I think we're, we're more hungry today. And that's what you see on the football field today. Yeah, you were able to neutralize um, 
the Kingston College camp very good, very well. How did you get your boys in tune with what the game plan was about that? What was the game plan and how did they get you did you uh, get um, them to Basically St. George's College is a is a is a, is a ball playing team. Um we we have staggered that today. As you can see, we are, we are more direct today. And I think that um, um, catch Casey by surprise today. And I think we, we follow up on that and that um, a catalyst for our building, building up play. Yeah, normally, usually with a build up from around the back. Notice today we go more direct. So that was one of the key elements today. Well, you have two matches uh, in between. Well, to close out the first round, you have uh, Kingston College, your last match on the 22nd. Do you think you can get another three points there? Um, we just want to worry about now um, our recovery. So we are focusing on our recovery and prepare for our upcoming games to come. But uh, I mean, today again, I mean, congrats to the guys in today. Well, your, your fans are congratulating your team and I hope you can go and celebrate with them. Yeah, man. Thanks, man. All of this. So that's the... Group A table, Kingston College is still leading the group with 21 points. Better goal difference, 33 to 31 for St. George's. Waterford, they have 11 points. Calabar, 8 points. Arden and Meadowbrook, the cellar dwellers with one point each. That's the standings for Group A. So our next game will be live next Saturday, 2.30 p.m., 3.30 ECT, Jamaica College against St. Catherine High. That's the top of the table clash for Group B. That will be live on Sportsmax. That's how we wrap it up here at the National Stadium East Field. St. George's College 4, Kingston College 2. Group A action in the ISA Schoolboy Football Manning Cup competition.